Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report, a look at city updates and municipal news, and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Your hosts, Emily Springstrow of Oshkosh Media, and City Manager Mark Roloff. Welcome to another edition of the City Manager's Report. I'm your host, John Urban, sitting in for Emily Springstro. And uh, today we're going to be talking about some of the news and notes happening here in the uh, Oshkosh community as it relates to city government. We're also going to be talking about some of the highlights for the upcoming Tuesday, October 24th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting. As always, remember those meetings can be seen here live on GovTV as well as heard live on WOCT Radio 101.9 FM. But Mark, thanks for being with us for another exciting show today. It's great to be here, John. All right, we're going to be talking about a few things that are happening here uh, as it relates to city government. And the first thing we want to talk about, of course, is it's that time of year with budgets coming up. The 2018 budget is just around the corner. we got some workshops coming up to, to, to talk about that. But maybe you can kind of give us a little recap of the status of the 2018 budget. Sure. The, uh, the budget process, as you know, uh, starts uh, in July when departments uh, submit their uh, proposals and everything. And now we're at a point where we have a budget to present to council, uh, give them some of our goals for 2018, uh, following our strategic plan, which is always a big important thing. So, uh, you know, drum roll please, our budget for uh, 2015, or excuse me, 2018, is gonna be uh, 73 and a quarter million dollars. So it's an increase of about 1.96% over the 2017 budget. Uh, and uh, the big thing is, you know, always the tax levy. And even though the budget's only going up less than 2%, the levy is going up 3.9%. And that's largely due to the fact that uh, state aids for municipalities continue to get cut back. Uh, there is some hope that with some of the programs in transportation uh, and some of the other programs that we get money from the state, those have gone up. The largest one is state shared revenue. Uh, the best way I can describe that is uh, sales taxes that are paid by uh, by you and I when we buy things they go directly to the state they get distributed through the shared revenue program and even though tax revenues are up on sales taxes the state hasn't increased that program for over 20 years we're getting mm -hmm. the same or less in that program than we got back in 1997 it's that it's been that frozen so when you have your second largest revenue source frozen for 20 years it goes back to property tax which is unfortunate because the state talks about we need to control property taxes, but they don't share sales taxes to make that happen. So that's a big frustration, but that's it's going up 3.9%. Uh, with that said, uh, about half of that increase is due to debt service. We're financing things for a shorter period of time, which actually, you know, think about it at home, like with your, a mortgage. If you go from a 30-year to a 15-year mortgage, your payments go up, but it's actually better for you in the long run. And we're borrowing some things for 10 years uh, rather than 20 years, and it's just a better way to do things. Uh, even though we're paying a little more on the front end, towards the end uh, we're going to be we'll be done a lot sooner. We'll be done in half the time. So in interest costs over time, we're really going to save money. So how does this year's budget compare to prior year budgets in terms of putting it together? Was it the same challenge as it always was? I would say not as hard as it has been because some of the other state programs. I don't want to complain and. and, and uh, complain about the state all the time because uh, payment for municipal services programs which reimburses us for tax exempt properties that went up quite a bit uh, transportation aids went up quite a bit so there were several uh, state aids that did go up that we're pleased about um, it's, I, I guess I could parenthetically say it was about time for those to go up as well but they're, they're good um, and I think uh, we're benefiting from very aggressively uh, bidding out health insurance. Our health insurance costs are actually going to go down nearly 5% because we've been very aggressively uh, getting bids and looking hard at those and making 
uh, changes to our health insurance program to make it more cost effective for the taxpayer. Uh, and it's getting our employees to be better consumers of health insurance. So that's been a very positive thing. And that, that 5% savings in health insurance is going a long way on, on keeping our costs down. All right, so we've got some workshops coming up where the public can uh, tune in and find out uh, all the details about the budget. So we've got those coming up on October 30th and the 31st. And those pretty much run all day as we go through all the budgets. Right. Uh, you'll see the, there'll be a schedule of different departments coming at different times. So if you're interested in one particular department, you can tune in for that. Uh, but each of the departments will be talking about not only their operating budget, but their capital budgets and how it relates to their strategic plan. So everybody has a role in the strategic plan. So they share with council how they're achieving the city's strategic planning goals that have been set by the council and how they're going to get it done. So it's very, it's a very good process and uh, happy that we're doing it. And as always, the 2018 proposed budget is online on the city's website as well. Yep, just go to uh, the uh, finance department and you look up budget and it'll be right there for you. All right, again, www.ci.oshkosh.wi.us for the entire budget. You can go online and see it there for 2018. All right, turning our attention to another big item, uh, of course, the last several months, you couldn't avoid this, the status of the Lakeshore Municipal Golf Course and Oshkosh Corp. What's the latest on that, and what's our game plan now? Well, the, the, the schedule is that Oshkosh Corp is still fielding proposals from different communities. It's not just about us. It's about us competing with other communities. So we're uh, having discussions with Oshkosh Corp on what what the expectations are from other communities and we have to do a little bit of recon work on our own to see what other communities might be doing and so we're working on those proposals uh, there is actually a closed session at this tuesday's meeting so we can present some of these things to council give them an idea of what types of things we might want to work on negotiating some type of package but eventually oshkosh corporation will will review what we put together and make a decision uh, about whether it's us or another community or something like that. They, uh, I think we pretty much have to have our ducks in a row by November 1st. And then assuming that we do have that and it's acceptable to Oshkosh Corporation, uh, then we would pr plan to have that to go to the council on November 14th for a review of a, an approval of a term sheet. In between that time, we want to give the Parks Board and the Plan Commission the opportunity to review what this tentative agreement term sheet looks like so that they can provide some input to council as well. And if there are any tweaks or anything, we can certainly take care of that before council votes on it. I know we've been working on this for many, many months now. I mean, do you feel good about the game plan that's been put forth? Uh, I feel good about the game plan. Uh, this is, you, you can't deny that this is a controversial issue. Uh, this divides families, but I think we have an opportunity to transform Lakeshore into a recreational uh, complex that uh, the city the city can enjoy for generations to come and we can help maintain uh, and retain a legacy company in Oshkosh for years to come. This will be a showpiece uh, and we will be able to uh, have a great deal of pride with that while at the same time still preserving some some open space public lands. Uh, we may be losing 30 but we're gaining you know, we're gaining a fortune 500 company that's going to be here for a long time and uh, in, uh, an opportunity to do some good things uh, with the remainder of that. So let's recap the timeline again. You hope to have sort of a, a perhaps agreement with terms ready by the 1st of November? That's the idea, yeah. And then from there you hope to then have a uh, put that in front of the Parks Board Planning Commission for some discussion on November 6th? Yeah, we tentatively have it November 6th. We want to make sure we have a deal and we're in on this thing before we formally schedule it, but we're getting the Planning Commissioners and Park Board members ready for, a, for a, a meeting and discussion on November 6th. And then it goes back to the council for a formal approval at some point? Correct. Okay. And then after that, then Oshkosh Corporation, our understanding is their board of directors will consider an award uh, location on November 20th. All right, so stay tuned for that. And again, if you'd like to tune in for that public, uh, hopefully this public meeting on November 6th at 6 p.m. that's going to be at the Oshkosh Convention Center. I'm expecting another big crowd again, hopefully, to participate with that. I, I think it's it's well worth having a good crowd for that. It's This is an important issue. Everybody needs to have a, an opportunity to chime in on it. All right, switching gears now to another item that's uh, been on everyone's minds here lately in the community, of course, the Oshkosh Arena. Um, it's a huge project. It's exciting to see it being uh, go, going forward, and, and every day you drive by, you see more and more of it being developed. What's the latest on, on the Oshkosh Arena? Well, everything I'm hearing from the folks at the arena that they're ready for uh, planning the tip-off 
on, on November 17th. Uh, even though they start their season out of town, that gives them a couple more weeks to get things done. They start their season on November 6th, but uh, the, the idea is to be ready for tip-off on November 17th. But what's also exciting, I mean, the herd is what brought the arena to us, but uh, they're looking at some, some name headline comedians to bring here some uh, other concerts, and uh, they just recently announced that the Harlem Globetrotters will be here on January 1st, so let's hope it's not a, conflicting with a Badgers bowl game that day, <laughs> but the whole idea will be to, to really bring more than just the herd basketball, which I think the G League is going to be fantastic. I think with the business plan that the NBA has laid out, we are at the, at the, at the start of something that could be very, very positive for for entertainment and draw people into town. I think that's going to be great. And then we've got this facility for another 300 days of the year to do all this other cool stuff. So that's what I'm excited about. I think it's going to create a lot of opportunities down in the Sawdust District area. You can see the buzz happening already. So I'm excited about this and uh, can't wait for November 17th. Very exciting. All right. Let's also talk about some other fall-related activities that we typically always talk about this time of year. Uh, Trick-or-treat hours in the city of Oshkosh. There's always questions as to when is it in the city of Oshkosh because it does change depending on what day it falls on. So let's talk about when are trick-or-treat hours for here in the city of Oshkosh this year. Well, uh, we're going to do trick-or-treating on October 31st. If you're a traditionalist, you get it on Halloween day uh, or Halloween evening. It'll be 5 to 7 p.m. Whenever we have it during the week, we do it 5 to 7 uh, just because it's a little tighter and, and we want to make sure that uh, maybe people are home and not traffic dangers out in the neighborhood. Sure. So 5 to 7 p.m. So, you know, get your uh, costumes on and your bags ready and get ready to go uh, collecting your candy uh, or whatever other treats are out there for you. So October 31st, 5 to 7 p.m. All right. Another item that, of course, anyone that uh, has uh, trees in their yard has noticed, leaf pickup. It's starting to fall. They're starting to get all over the place. So uh, what do we advise people for leaf pickup? Well, unfortunately, you're adults and you have to do leaf pickup. You don't get to, get to go trick-or-treating. Um, it started, uh, it's already started. It's the day after your normal uh, garbage pickup day. So if you get garbage picked up on Monday, you put your leaves out by Tuesday. But please don't rake them into the street. Um, that creates a danger and it actually can, help, can clog the drains, which we, is what we're trying not to do. So uh, get them out there by your terrace and we'll take them up uh, the day after your garbage day. And then uh, it's going to be going through the week of October, or November 14th. We try to maybe extend that, but we can't promise that because we got to get ready for snow and our leaf pickup and our snow, they kind of, they're kind of used for the same thing. So we got to be ready. So um, yeah, let's hope that the leaves fall because they haven't been falling. And I know that that's, our leaf guys haven't been that busy these past couple weeks. So when you see the leaves, get them out. Okay, now is uh, time for the question mark segment. So we'll roll the open now. And the question that was submitted for this week's program, Mark, is when will the Marion Road water tower be completed? We've been getting a lot of questions about this lately. You know, whenever you see it um, up there and it's the, you got the white paint, it's like, well, just slap the logo on and we're done. I wish it was that simple, but this is a live shot of uh, what's going on. So you can see that, uh, you know, we've got uh, the cover that goes up on a windy day uh, when they're painting, but uh, the painting of the interior, we have to paint the interior this as well. Um, the painting of the interior and exterior is anticipated to be done by the end of October, so we're real excited about that. Then, of course, you'll have the logos that have to be put on. That'll uh, take a little bit of time. Um, there's other samplings and different things we have to do in order to uh, uh, follow requirements of the law, but we think we're going to be ready by the middle of December, which is um, so far ahead of the original schedule that was done originally, we were thinking maybe late uh, 2018, like this time in 2018. So the fact that it's getting done that quickly is, is really exciting. And then the follow-up question I get, and I'm sure it's going to increase after the, sure. the water towers online, is when's the old one coming down? And based on everything we see, we think that the demolition of the old water tower will probably be in May of 2018. So this is easily eight to ten months ahead of schedule so we're very happy to be doing that um, and all the construction and the the disruptions of the area 
will will be gone. We'll have a new water tower with a new Fresh City logo on it, and we'll be excited to have that. That'll be very cool. New 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 water tower with the updated city logo. That'll be that'll be nice. Absolutely. All right, we're going to take a short break here on the city manager's report that wraps up the news and notes uh, section of the program. When we return, we're going to be talking about highlights of the upcoming Tuesday, October twenty fourth, Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. So stay tuned. We'll be back with more of the city manager's report right after this. Hi, I'm Jim Michelson, Chairman of the Bicycle okay, so and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. The Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee is made up of seven resident representatives from the City of Oshkosh. We strive to promote and encourage safe bicycle and walking as significant means of transportation in the City of Oshkosh. Our committee goals involve working towards the development of a coordinated system of safe and convenient bikeways and walkways and stimulation of public awareness through educational events. Our committee is tasked with reviewing and updating the bicycle and pedestrian circulation plan and recommend projects for funding through the city's capital improvement plan. We aim to make Oshkosh a bike and pedestrian friendly city and are making strides in protecting and growing the biking and walking population. The Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee and many other boards and committees who serve the city of Oshkosh are an extremely important part of our local government and community. We encourage you to consider serving on a city board or commission to help make Oshkosh a great place to live, work, and play. Welcome back to the City Manager's Report. I'm your host, John Urban. Joining me as usual, City Manager for the City of Oshkosh, Mark Roloff. We're now going to be talking about uh, some of the highlights coming up on the Tuesday, October 24th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting. That meeting will be seen live on GovTV. Of course, you can watch it live streamed at www.oshkoshmedia.org, or you can listen to it on the radio, 101.9 FM WOCT. So, Mark, we're going to be talking about a couple of the highlights. Uh, one of the highlights of the agenda we wanted to talk about is item number seven, Resolution 1705, uh, this is about the Riverwalk West project, and I understand the bids came in very well for this, which allows us to do kind of more uh, professional services to kind of help with being able to do more. Yeah, we were so excited to get these bids. They were a million dollars under budget. Um, just the timing, sometimes the timing is really good. You get contractors who are very hungry and put in some aggressive bids. And uh, we had put in an alternate saying, how about if you'd finish the whole thing? And they gave us such good numbers that uh, we went to council and recommended that we, we do the entire area. We do have the funds set aside. And so as you can see here, uh, 2016, we got that area done east of Oregon Street. Uh, for 2017, 2018, uh, we'll be able to get everything done west of Oregon Street all the way to the bridge that we had, uh, that was literally a bridge to nowhere at this point. That'll be completed going all the way to the Boatworks property through the Gelblin site. So we're very excited about that. Because we didn't necessarily anticipate this, we only had an engineering contract to do a part of this project. Now that we know we're doing the whole thing, we're going to have the engineering work to, to do the construction oversight. So this is an area, this is the uh, Gelwin site that you can see right now. And there was some prep work that we had already gotten done, which actually helped get the cost down a little bit. It doesn't look like much, but that seawall is probably more expensive than the Riverwalk itself. In fact, I know it's a lot more expensive. So we got some of that done, which enabled the contractor to just go in there and just start doing, uh, doing Riverwalk. Uh, so we've got some really good bids. And then by the end of this, we'll have the Riverwalk done on the south side all the way from Wisconsin up to where uh, the Dockside Tavern is. So near where the Granary Restaurant is getting uh, redone into an office complex and that. So you can see that that area is 
you know, it's very exciting that we're getting this done. Uh, the Michigan Avenue uh, shelter that was done a couple years ago, you can you know park there, uh, use it for a launching pad for uh, biking or kayaking or maybe a combination of both, uh, picnic area as well. So we're real excited about this. To put this in perspective, how much, if you had to guess, how much of the River Walk as a whole will not be completed after this project is done? I would say that we are probably 70 to 75 percent of the downtown River Walk completed as a result That's of amazing. this. That's amazing. Yeah, the, really the only thing left is a little bit from the dock site over to uh, Maine and then over to the Pioneer Island. Excellent. All right, another item we want to talk about, item number 12, award bid to Capelli Brothers and Dietrich for cladding rehab at the Oshkosh Public Library. Well, this is a project that you've been working on with the library, which I really appreciate. This is really to take care of the stone out exterior so that water doesn't seep in and cause damage and problems down the road. We did a little work a few years ago. This is the next phase of it. And the library was redone a little over 20 years ago. And that 20 years, you start mm -hmm. seeing some things. You need some maintenance done. And we're getting it done. And, we're, and the bids came in really good on this, uh, probably about $50,000 under budget. Excellent. All right, item 18 we want to talk about. Uh, this is the uh, Friends of Oshkosh Parks to utilize Menominee Park for Celebration of Lights, another great event here in the community. You know, the, that, that group, Leon and his entire group of volunteers that helped put this together is just fantastic. Uh, it's going to start on November 24th, uh, uh, so we're excited that we're going to be able to get that, uh, be able to offer that to the community, get everybody to see it. Um, Every year there's a, a couple little things different, but it's always fun. The stuff you've seen for years, the new stuff, it's really exciting. And I think it gives Oshkosh a lot of character, makes it a very family-friendly place, and we're happy to have it in our community. And if folks aren't aware, uh, many nonprofit groups uh, will help man the booths for canned good donations as people drive through. And uh, we're pleased to note that the Friends of Oshkosh Community Media have signed up for a night this year, so you can look for our folks down there. One of the nights coming up this season as well. Okay, we also wanted to talk about item number 26, and this again kind of goes back to the river walk, but it's a little different here. This is to amend the park's ordinance for, uh, to fishing along the south side of Fox River River Walk. This is right there in front of the Geldwin site. You know, they're planning to do some type of development that will have residential mixed with commercial, and the residential area, they want to make sure that uh, it's attractive for residents and everything. We did the same thing over by City Center, over by Beckett's and the ground round where we restrict fishing in that area. We just don't allow it there. And similarly, we're going to uh, prohibit fishing there. That doesn't mean you can't go fishing uh, farther to the west over in the city, the public areas of the city, but in this area because they've been kind enough to work with us very cooperatively to make that land available for the Riverwalk, it's just a, a courtesy to them for their future residents, it'll help attract people that they know there aren't going to be obstructed views with people fishing there. All right, items 29 and 30 are, are interconnected to a degree. This is uh, some neighborhood groups. Uh, we're always excited to have the, their engagement uh, with, with municipal government, of course. So talk a little bit about what these two groups have been doing in terms of uh, neighborhood plans and such. We're so excited. We've got, in this case, it's, it's two very active neighborhood associations. One is the River East neighborhood, and the other one is the Miller Bay, Miller's Bay neighborhood. They're actually uh, different phases because everybody's moving along at their own speed. Some have started earlier than others, but River East has been one of the later ones, but they have just been hitting it running. Um, and they've been working uh, very closely with our library, um, with the, uh, the folks over at the Washington building in terms of putting together William Waters Plaza right there at Washington and State Street very exciting about what they're proposing there and uh, then additionally then you have Miller's Bay uh, the Miller's Bay Neighborhood Association they've been in existence for a long time doing a lot of really neat things and they've developed a streetscape vision plan they already have their neighborhood plan done uh, River East is just getting their neighborhood plan done but Miller's Bay that's already done now they're going to the next level doing some neighborhood streetscaping ideas and this is all done with uh, the, the Go H and I folks, Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative, as well as our planners. And Stephen or Alexa are available to assist you if you're interested in, in uh, jump starting a, a group or just getting your group going a little more. Give Steve or Alexa a call at 236 5059 and they'll help you uh, organize a neighborhood association, give you tips on what you can do. Um, how uh, tips on how to be a, a community leader and, and, and how to generate interest in your neighborhood association. And we're just excited that 
We have, we're, I think we're up to 14 neighborhood associations That's now. Impressive. So uh, we're, we're so excited about that. Trying to do a few more on the south side. We only have a few on the south side. I just talked to a resident the other night interested in doing a neighborhood association uh, in, the, in, in the area near the arena, which I think is just fantastic. So we're excited and hopefully get more neighborhood associations going because it really helps connect uh, the neighborhoods and the neighbors to the city. And with all the resources we can work together, sure. we get some great things done. Makes a lot of sense. Item number 31 is to address some soil conditions uh, down at the arena. Maybe you can kind of give us a little uh, heads up on what this is all about. Well, just like we encountered some soil issues when we were doing the, uh, the street improvements out there, the land there is called Sawdust District for a reason. You know, it's, it's sort of a tongue-in-cheek thing, only half joking, but there are a good deal of soil conditions. And, you know, we only acquired that property, you know, earlier this year. And so there wasn't a lot of known things out there. Uh, and the soil conditions are poor. Not as much contaminated as we originally thought, but the soil conditions, a lot of sawdust, I mean, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. So that's created some additional costs for them. Um, and nobody was gonna know that until you started digging. And once you found it, it's like, okay, we got a lot to do. Additionally, uh, the folks at the arena have been very cooperative with us in recognizing that the public improvements out there uh, everybody needs to share the cost. There is a bit of a concern or controversy that the costs have gone up. They're experiencing the same thing we have, but they're also willing to help chip in a little more to get some of those public improvements done as well. Um, I think this is going to be just a wonderful area when it's done, but we're taking care of 150 years of problems that were out there, 20, 150 years of sins of, yeah. of our past, <laughs> and we just have to clean them up. Sure. And we have that all over the place. It's a challenge for us, but we're rising to the challenge and, and getting those things done. And so you know, I know that people are saying, well, these are cost overruns. Well, they're costs that were unknowns. And now that we know about them, we're addressing them head on because we don't want to pass these problems right. on to, to future generations and then just regret it. Why didn't we take care of it? Right. We're taking care of them right now, and I think the final product's gonna be fantastic. And doing it right, that sounds good. Okay, and the last item we wanna talk about is item 35. This is awarding a bid for a public works contract uh, for Merrill Jewel, Mary Jewel Lift Station, and you get a park shelter as well out of the deal. Well, we know that we need to take care of some uh, sewer pumping issues. We gotta get uh, the sewage from that area north of Sawyer Creek, under Sawyer Creek, to get to the uh, sewer treatment plant. We also have been trying for years to get a shelter over there. Mary Jewel Park is a very popular place for, um, for baseball and there are no restrooms out there. So this is a combination of doing both a restroom and uh, the lift station on the same building. So this is gonna be on the, the north side of Mary Jewel Park, kind of near Pinocchio, near the trees. So it'll be a nice little shady area for them as well. But the idea is to get the lift station done uh, and, and improve sewer performance in that area, but a park shelter that everybody wants to enjoy. Parks Board, or excuse me, the Plan Commission uh, has some concerns. They want to make sure it's going to look nice. It's a high profile area, sure. and so they, they still want to get a few things on it, but we want to get the work started because we got a lot of sewer work to do to connect it to that. So we'll get the uh, Plan Commission to give us input on the other stuff later, but we're excited that we're getting it done and uh, look for that construction to uh, to really kick into high gear next spring. Uh, the sewer work will be starting, but the, the structure itself will start next spring. All right, well that wraps up the highlights for the Tuesday, October 24th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. We encourage you to tune in live here on GovTV. The meeting begins live at 6 p.m. Also encourage you, if you can't watch it live on cable, you can watch it web stream live at www.oshkoshmedia.org. Or certainly, if you can't listen to uh, watch it on TV or, or watch it live, you can listen to it on the radio, WOCT 101.9 FM. So again, thank you for uh, kind of giving us a heads up on various things, not only happening in the city, but on the agenda coming up, Mark. And thank you again for uh, being on the show. Always happy to do it. That wraps up another edition of the City Manager's Report. Have a good night. We'll see you next time.